What's going on guys, Danny from Skateboard Strength and welcome to the main masterclass for the foot, calf and ankle program. What I think will be incredibly important to start with is to give you an understanding of the mechanics of the foot, calf and ankle and to show you why skating places such a high demand of strength and ability in those areas. Skaters rely massively on their foot, calf and ankle complex and it is essentially the area of the body that all forces have to travel through in order to do anything we're ever gonna do on a skateboard. The characteristics of the foot, calf and ankle complex also vary in complexity, needing to be strong to withstand forces from bailing and flip tricks, as well as maintain an element of spring and explosiveness to express power and pop. All of this loading can leave the foot, calf and ankle complex tight and restricted and this is where problems start to occur. Let's look at our model in order to see how this can affect things like hot pockets as well as basic function at the ankle. Because of the high demand placed on the foot, calf and ankle when skating to absorb landings and steer our boards, the foot, calf and ankle can be left tight and restricted. When this happens, it changes the foot's ability to function properly. Let's use hot pockets as an example. Hot pockets or anterior ankle impingement is characterized by the shin bone hitting the talus bone at the front of the ankle and causing an impinging of the tendons and ligaments that pass through there over time. Ankle dorsiflexion is relied on by skaters in a massive way when we try and get down for the pop phase or as we're absorbing landings. Ankle dorsiflexion is characterized by trying to get the knee over the toe. So if you look at my shin bone here or the shin bone on my model, on my model it comes up to the knee as I get the knee to come forward, I close the gap up here at the front of the ankle between that talus bone and the shin bone. Now, if you have good mechanics at the foot, what happens is that foot is allowed to what we call pronate and flatten down a bit, which clears that talus out of the way and allows that shin bone to move forward effectively without clipping. However, when you have faulty mechanics, which skaters often do due to having really tight feet from oversteering their boards or doing basically anything on a skateboard, we get stuck into what we call supination at the foot, which means the arch of our foot gets really tight and gets stuck in this position. So as we go to come forward with our shin, our foot is stuck here with our toe gripping on for dear life. The talus stays really high and now causes that clipping at the front, which causes that irritation over time because every time we go to land a trick or we go to pop and we're trying to get that knee over the toe that ankle's jamming up and it's causing that pinching feeling at the front of the ankle this is why first order of the day in our program is to loosen the muscles that support the foot calf and ankle complex in order to restore range of motion and allow the foot calf and ankle to express proper function. This will be done here as well as on the separate mobility day that you are to do on the days off from your main foot, calf and ankle program. We then move on to expressing that range of motion that we have just gained from the mobility exercises. You want to really pay attention here to the mechanics of what's going on at that foot, calf and ankle complex. This is specifically important with the toes off front foot elevated split squat. Here, our aim is to take the big toe out of the equation, which will in turn allow you to relax the foot and let the talus drop down in order to express ankle dorsiflexion properly. This will be huge for those rehabbing hot pocket issues. From there, we move on to our main strengthening exercises. Now, the two biggest muscles in our foot, calf and ankle complex are gonna be our gastroc and our soleus. And both of them make up the two portions of our calf muscles. They are best trained in the straight leg and bent knee positions. The straight leg being the gastroc and the bent knee being the soleus, which is why we attack both of them in this program. Getting the gastroc and soleus and the calf as a whole nice and strong is going to be integral in allowing you to deal with the forces placed on the foot, calf and ankle when you go for a skate. Proprioception at the ankle is our next stop where we aim to increase awareness and sensitivity of the position of the ankle relative to upper body and lower body movements. This is gonna be huge for those recovering from ankle rolls because the laxity and ligaments from having taken their ankle to such an extreme range of motion now creates this false perception of how far their ankle should be rolling before you reflexively try to straighten the ankle out. Next is something that goes completely overlooked when trying to get someone back to skating after a foot, calf and ankle problem. 
which is training elasticity and spring and ability to absorb loads at the ankle. Everything we are ever going to do on a skateboard has a plyometric nature in terms of load at the ankle, which is why we use pogos in the single variation and the lateral variations in order to build that tolerance up to allow you to be able to withstand that plyometric nature of skating. These pogo variations will start with the base level variation, which allows you to progress from beginner all the way to advance. So as your skating continues to progress and there are more forces and more load going through those ankles, your body and your ankle will be able to tolerate it and allow you to continue to progress. Now, building tolerance over time is going to be important here, especially with the plyometric exercises like the pogos. So I always advise you go the minimum effective dose, so minimum sets given as well as minimum time. As you build tolerance over time, you'll be allowed to start going towards that higher end of sets given and higher end of repetitions. Use how you pull up the next day as an indication of whether you need to progress or not. If you pull up fine, then add some more progressions in terms of extra sets or going for that higher rep range. If you pull up in usually tight or overly tight, it's a good indication that you're kind of right where you need to be or maybe back off a little bit to allow you to progress over time. How you know you're ready for the next progression is when you can hit the maximum sets given for the maximum time. Once you can do this comfortably and not pull up incredibly tight the next day, it's a good indication that you're ready to move on to the next variation and do that as soon as you can, hit those reps and sets given in order to keep you progressing rather than stay stagnant. Finally, we look at some supporting players. The tib anterior muscle is huge for foot, calf and ankle health as well as plays a massive role in the flick phase. So this is why we look to train it in the lateral band flick as well as our tib anterior raise. Our foam roller pulse variations allows us to train the foot, calf and ankle complex as a whole along with our hamstring and our glute the way we're often using it in our push stride. This program is designed to be used one of two ways. The first is with your ultimate performance program designed to be done no more than twice a week on the off days from your ultimate performance program days. The second will be in a rehabilitation phase when you're looking to get back to skating, in which case you look to perform this program two to three times a week, performing the mobility program that goes with it on the off days. What's really important, whichever way you decide to use this program, is to allow it to scale over time. See how you pull up the next day and use that as a guide to see whether the foot, calf and ankle has been able to deal with what you've given it on that day. What's even more important is that you don't stay stagnant throughout this program. Always aim to try and get to the next variation as soon as you can complete the reps and sets given of the variation exercises. This will allow you to continue to use this program until you hit the final stages of mastery with a lot of the pogo variations as well as the straight leg calf raise variations. Finally, if you have any questions, be sure to hit up the Facebook group or drop me a message and I'll be happy to answer your questions as soon as I can. Remember, life on the plank is brutal on the foot, calf and ankle complex and doing the easiest of variations in this program is in no way gonna prepare you for some of the forces that get placed on the foot, calf and ankle complex when you go out for a skate. So, make sure you continue to progress as soon as you're ready and the more you can continue to do so, the more you can begin to bulletproof your foot, calf and ankle complex for life on the plank.